Well, as we are working through the middle part of June, what are we tracking with the latest weather forecasts? It's been uh, interesting to watch here for several weeks as we continue to keep our eyes on things like heavy rain in parts of the Ohio Valley into the south, scattered showers and storms uh, being helpful in parts of the western, northwestern Corn Belt and more. What's the long range looking like? Let's talk about all this and get caught up on the weather with Eric Snodgrass from Nutrient Ag Solutions. And Eric, good to talk with you again on our weekly weather update. And you know, something you and I were talking about before we went on the air here that I think is it's an interesting starting point for us is that I know for you and others in the meteorological field this spring and into the summer, it's been an interesting one to try and forecast here when you look at all the models and more it's just it's it's been a little tough i guess i would say right eric well i think it comes down to a couple things one you know when do we do most of our talking about the growing season in terms of predictions well it's all during winter right so it's like hey let's have a bunch of winter meetings let's get out and engage with farmers because that's when they can do things they can come to meetings and we can talk so during that time frame we're like all right, what are the risk factors? And if you go back to last fall, right, we had epic fall throughout, or excuse me, epic drought throughout the Mississippi Valley. We then had um, lack of snow in the Northern Plains. We saw that by March, the drought monitor was still quite expansive on coverage across the country. We were watching huge dust storms come out of the Southern Plains. We know that historically following a La Nina, we tend to have greater risk of heat and drought in the central United States. And we also know that following a fall drought, the next May through August tends to be hotter and drier. Oh, and the ocean temperatures were cold off the West Coast. <laughs> you know, so you, you can't look at all of that and go, no, 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 no drought. So we, we had that conversation. We, we tagged a number to it. We said it's about 60 percent risk in the Western Corn Belt. But, you know, I, I, I suffer from the same kind of issues that a lot of other folks that try to predict the future do. And that's persistence bias. Right. You know, I gave 100 talks last year. And so when every talk that you give, the majority of them being winter, you get up and you say, like, you and I were together in February, right? And my narrative was like, hey, I, I, I see these things. No, I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not clairvoyant, but you just need to watch them. And I said, you need to watch them. And honestly, I gave a date. I don't know when you and I were together in Nashville back in, on February 2nd, was it? I was like, June 17th is the date. Like that, that and that's tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And my, my point behind that being, if these things don't line up between now and then, you know, back then and now, that's an easy way to think of it, then uh, we have to change the narrative. And I'll be honest, the, the, the persistence bias that I, that I sometimes exhibit is just maddening to me. You know, you, you say that so many times, like, I, you know, you want, you want to be right. We all want to be right, you know, but when there's overwhelming evidence to the contrary, you have to talk about it. So here it is. Okay. What did spring do? By the time we got into April, the Mid-South was flooding. We knew that. That was well predicted. What I didn't predict well was that in May, the Southern Plains were going to get as wet as they did. What we were worried about was that the Bermuda High was going to start this northward shift as momentum fell out of the system. Momentum fell out of the system, but the Bermuda High didn't shift. What happened instead was Canada caught fire, right? <laughs> and that was not on the bingo card back when I was uh, predicting you know, the, the, the spring weather back in, in winter. Uh, so we're waiting on that Bermuda high to possibly shift. That's, that's the thing that that's what it's going to be that for the rest of summer daily monitoring the big subtropical highs of any other side of the United States. So where is it right now? It's in Bermuda and it's just rolling around, pumping in moisture. And if it pumps in moisture, Jesse, we get hot, we get stormy. Those storms are going to have plenty of instability to, to deal with. And that's why over the next four days, I'm going to be watching from the central plains, the northern plains, upper Midwest, Midwest, all the way to the east for this transitional pattern of severe weather. And every day it's going to be watching the radar throughout the day to see where those storms come in. So I said June 17th. By June 17th, if that Bermuda high had drifted and the waters got cold in the Gulf of Alaska, ding, 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 I'm going to ring the bell. Just say, hey, it's going, it's going, it's going to happen be aware of not just regional drought, because there is still regional drought right now, Jesse, but mm -hmm. I'm about more widespread drought problems. And I'm not pulling the string to ring the bell today because the Gulf of Alaska is not gone over cold and the Bermuda High has stayed anchored. So what do you do with this information? Is there risks still on the table? Yeah, it's just not now. It's, it's going to be down the road. And it's just a reminder, we're still 
you know, about a week away from summer. So summer, you know, it's not <laughs> technically summer <laughs> hasn't started yet. You know, we're still heading toward those critical months of July and, and August and so much can change. But again, that's why we talk every week. So Jesse, I spent the whole weekend thinking about just that little sentence I gave you right there, but that's what's on my mind. Well, and you raised some very interesting points to think about here and to the one you just had about there's still definitely still risk on the table just not right now i think that's in itself a good reminder that mother nature you know we can't control i mean who knows we could have something happen and we could start to see more yeah. widespread drought show up in late july early august or maybe it's this fall again or this winter i mean it's just one of those things where you know folks like you do the best you can to forecast, but at the end of the day, it's a forecast. And yeah. these factors don't always line up the way we think they will, right, Eric? Well, that's not only it. It's it's also the fact that every prediction of the future, every prediction of the future that we do uh, is probabilistic, right? And that's hard, that's hard for most people, myself included, to understand. You know, you're telling me th the chance, what we want to do with probabilistic forecasts is turn them into deterministic yeses and nos. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, of course we do that. We have to plan our lives around this stuff. And I don't want someone to tell me 80% or 20%. I want a yes or no. So I get it. And by the way, Jesse, I know I've, I've, I've said this broad scale drought things off the table, but you go to Eastern Iowa, there's places that are very dry. Central Michigan, bone dry. You can find pockets in Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, the Red River Valley of the North, very, very dry. There's pockets in the Northeast that are dry, the Northwest. So this isn't like we've just, uh, oh, no, 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 everybody's got rain. You know, there's issues. And I'll be honest with you, the upcoming forecast for the Southern Plains, we've got hot conditions, very hot conditions, very windy conditions. And to be honest, I'm very thankful that the storms hit Oklahoma over the weekend because had they not gotten those storms, we'd be going into a flash drought scenario in central Oklahoma as well. So it's just important to say here that we are now moving into a time of year where the way that precipitation is delivered is hyper local from thunderstorms. And it's going to be that way until, until the hurricane season starts. So what you got up to this point is what's going to help sustain you through the rest of the season. And if you're in the have nots category, then we're still worried. Well, we're definitely going to keep our eyes on all of this and the weather pattern here in the U.S. as we move into the back half of this month and beyond. How about looking around the world, Eric? I know there's plenty of things on the table worldwide. What are some of the key ones you're watching this week? Yeah, so the same pattern that's set up over North America is also changing things over Europe. So Big Ridge in Central Europe, it's getting hot. It's getting very dry from Central Europe all the way over to Ukraine. That's got to be watched. I've got drier conditions in... Um, like the Manchurian Plain, Mongolia, North China Plain. Got to watch that. It's very wet just north of the Yangtze. Could be major flooding there. Southeast Asia is very wet. But Australia, the southern part of Australia, from, from Western Australia through South Australia through Victoria and Queensland. Uh, not Queensland, excuse me. New South Wales. That's a whole southern tip. They're, I mean, in severe to exceptional drought there. Now, it's the middle of winter, but they grow winter crops too, don't forget. So we've got issues in other parts of the world that need to be watched carefully. But I, I'll just come back to what I said. I feel like most of the trade is just watching U.S. weather right now. And we might have one of these international problems just all of a sudden jump up and folks go, oh, shoot, we, we've got a production problem here, too. Now, that, that may or may not be true. I'm only giving you that based on what I hear day in and day out. And I'm just a little tiny pinch of the entire ag ecosystem, right? But, uh, you know, it's just some perspective to offer. Well, and it's something too. We watch all these different pieces around the world, how they come together. You mentioned, you know, the Bermuda high and, and hurricane season and when that starts to ramp up. And it's just, it's a reminder that we have to stay on our toes and, and pay attention to the weather day in and day out. Right, Eric? Yeah, it is. And I would still tell you, you know, if I could, if I could be confident in any forecast right now, it would be that through the remainder of summer into fall, I expect there to be continued across time and geography, major disparity, major ranges in precipitation. I do not expect it to be just nice and even and perfect for big areas. I think it's just going to be highly local how the weather is delivered to places. Um, good news is we're going to get some heat on the crop coming up. We need heat on this crop. And uh, we're going to pack that in here for a little bit. But uh, it's just a matter of do we keep it around too long and do spots that miss these thunderstorms end up seeing some stress 
That is going to be the name of the game. Do we, as I like to say, freckle the Corn Belt? In other words, there's pockets that are problematic. And are those the most productive or the least productive or somewhere in between? And every year, that's what we're trying to figure out to determine that end of year yield number. I'll say this too, as we wrap this up, Jesse, don't forget that all that wet, cool weather we had early in the season, like the, the very cool finish to May and start the beginning of June is also a, a setup for fungal pressures to really, really take hold. And we're already seeing some reports of, you know, everything from our more, more common you know, types of fungal pressure on big crops like corn and soybeans. But I've heard reports of tar spot showing up and we've got some crown rot going on. And so th these kind of things are really starting to, well, they're just showing you the other side of the drought risk table, right? You're like, oh, drought, drought, drought. Wait a minute, when it's too wet, it has its own set of problems. And so I don't think I'm going to look back on this year and say, oh, this is this was the year. This was the year where everything fired on all cylinders it's not. We, we still have regional problems that are going to continue to eat away at, at the numbers. And I think we need to pay close attention to them. Agweather.com for more. AG-WX.com. Eric Snodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions. Always good to chat with you, my friend. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. All right. Take care.